I'm gonna start working on another. I'm gonna start working on a. Uh, what is that? Hmm. Check this thing out. I like trimming trees. Just kind of wish I could have trimmed trees like this. back and do my intro. I'm going to be working on valve stems again. No, not the valve stems on the tires. The valve stems in the heads. I'm going to be changing the valve stem seals on the heads and the Suburban that. Hopefully I don't have to take the heads off. We shall see. Right, so as you can see, I have the uh, Suburban on blocks to get it down low enough for me to work on pretty easy. So I'm going to start tearing the uh, all the crap off the top of the motor and get to the valve covers. So here is the uh, valve seals. They're single piece. They have the uh, spring cup and the seal on them. I bought this little cheap valve spring compressor where I don't have to pull all of the uh, rocker arms off at once and pull the, uh, the brace off between them. I can bolt this on top of the brace and do them one cylinder at a time and then tighten them back up where they need to be. It's made out of uh, aluminum and chinesium. We'll see if it works or not. Also, I'm gonna use my compression tester. Hook it to my air hose, screw it into the spark plug hole, and uh, hopefully I don't drop a valve in the cylinder. Let's get started. All right, so I took one of my new shop lights and I uh, hooked it into the hood so I'll have light out here underneath the carport. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is unbolt the hinges for the hood and put it in uh, maintenance mode or whatever you want to call it. Hey Brody, can you come out here and help me a minute? You don't need shoes. Hold this hood up. Thank you. All the way up like that. Getting those lights. Turn it. Yeah, you can turn the lights. Perfect. Wow. It's bright. That is bright. It's going to work good. I'm going to start tearing everything off of the motor. And then when I get the uh, valve covers off, I'll holler at you to turn the motor over for me. Okay. Alright, so that's with the hood in service mode. All you do is move your hinges from the original spot down to the lower holes in the, the uh, hood hinge and uh, it'll stand up straight and you have way more room to get in there. So we actually have a, uh, a section for valve spring retainers and seal replacement. All right, so that's everything I bolted off the valve covers. I'm gonna get my air hose and I'm gonna blow the top of the motor off. There's a bunch of leaves and mud and stuff up there. So I'm gonna blow that off and then pull the valve covers off. So an uh, eight millimeter or 15 sixteenths to pull the valve covers off. Still with the axle on the ground, I'm almost too short to reach all that. So the bolts are captured in the grommets. Just 
back and forth, slide this puppy right out. So now I'm gonna pull the uh, spark plugs. I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna pull the spark plug wires off and pull the spark plugs. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm packing paper towels in each one of the, uh, the spots where the oil drains back in the engine. That way, if I drop one of those keepers, it won't end up in the oil pan. I've already found top dead center. And with all of the uh, spark plugs out, I just used a 24 millimeter wrench on the alternator. And I was able to find top dead center. I used my compression gauge. So on the compression gauge, you have to take the Schrader valve out here. But I turned the engine over until I started getting compression. Then I backed this out. Screwdriver stuck in cylinder number one. I brought it up until it got stuck. Backed it out, spun it over a little bit, stuck it back in, and it started going down. So I pulled it back out and spun it backwards just a little bit to bring the piston back up. Got number one cylinder valve seals done. Take a look at them. They are a little crusty. All right, so I'm gonna go with the firing order. So one, eight, whatever. So cylinder number eight is next. All right, so I lost memory, or I lost storage on my memory on my phone, and uh, I don't know where I left off. So first, what you gonna do, I did cylinder one already, but I'm going to cylinder eight next. So I'm gonna put this in the, uh, try to put this in the spark plug hole. It's probably the worst one to work on. Maybe I'll do this one and then I'll start videoing on cylinder seven or whatever's next. All right, so I got number eight and number seven done. Those were a pain in the butt. Oh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to use. So I'm soaking all of my rocker arms in some Lucas before I, uh, I install them. Maybe it'll help a little bit on, uh, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to. All right, I'm just tightening them up with the quarter inch ratchet first. And then after I get them all changed, I'll go through the uh, tightening sequence and tighten them all to 22 foot-pounds. All right, so this one's on the uh, front of the motor. It's daylight out, and uh, it's probably going to be the best one for me to show you, show you what I'm doing. All right, so I've already broken the, uh, the bolts loose. It's the number two cylinder. It is the next in line. So I've got my hose hooked up to it. I'm gonna go ahead and back it off. I'm gonna pull them both off and uh, remember which one's the exhaust and which one is the intake. All right, so I've been taking a rocker arm bolt and sticking in this tool. I'm gonna start with the uh, intake valve. So I'm just gonna snug it up. Um, the bolt is just a little too long to tighten the tool down all the way. It gets close, so I'm scared to tighten it up any tighter. I'm afraid it'll bottom out in the head and crack it. 
guess I better put air on first. This is another thing. The air compressor is going to run. You're just going to have to deal with it. And it rotated the motor. So now I'm no longer at top dead center. And I have to have air in it. Good man. Spring off. Just look at it. Make sure there's no cracks in it. All right. And I picked up a spark plug puller, spark plug boot puller. It works really good for this. You can see those are really crusty, really hard. A little bit of sludge built up underneath the seal hat. Well, that compressor's not kicked on yet. Yeah, so I might have to take my pick and scrape that off. Uh, one of the keepers shot out, and it was the worst possible time for it to shoot out because the air compressor was running and I couldn't hear where it fell. All right, so I searched for it for a little bit, couldn't find it, so I went and fed my, uh, went and fed my fish, got a cup of coffee, and looked again, and there it is. So for those that don't know, this is how small the keeper is, there's two of them, and that little bitty thing right there will stop catastrophic failure. So after that fiasco, I will, uh, Put the uh, rocker arms back on. Right, so one thing I have been doing is uh, I got a mix of like 50 or 15W40 and uh, Lucas oil here. And with them sitting out like that, they're kind of kind of dry. I kind of want to clean them up and soak them in oil. Well, kids hollering in the video is just part of it when you're working in the front yard. And I've just been snugging these up with my quarter inch. That way they're tight. You might as well talk because the girls have talked through the whole video. One thing to make sure that the rocker arm is on top of the push rod and it lines up with the uh, lines up with the valve in the spring whenever you tighten it up. As you can see, I forgot the motor rotated, so you can see when I tighten it up, it opened the valve. But that's fine. Eight more seals to go, four more cylinders. So I've had all those seals done last night. So now I'm going to uh, start tightening all the rocker arms right now. So there's a specific way you're supposed to tighten them. Um, I'll show the tightening order here. So like I said, I'm in the front yard. And, uh, and the kids are being loud, so I'll time lapse this and uh, see what I'm doing that way. All right, so now I'll rotate the motor over 360 degrees.
So with the rocker arms tight, I'm going to crank the motor over with the starter just to make sure I don't have any problems while it's still open. Alright, no rocker arms fell off. No loud pops, no springs flying. I'm going to call that good. Pull these rags out of here. Get the valve covers back on. So you probably don't have to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and soak the rocker arms and all that with uh, fresh oil. This is a little thicker oil than normal. This is some diesel oil I have. Don't even know why I have it, but I'm gonna use it. All right, I'm gonna clean those sealant surfaces up and put the valve covers on. Alright, so you can see I kind of goofed up whenever I put the grommets in the valve cover first and then shove this through. It ruined them. So, I'm going to have to pull one of my good ones or one of my old ones off and see if I ruined any more. Alright, so I'm going to go grab one of my old ones and put back on this. So, be sure and put them on the bolt before you put them in the valve cover. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put spark plugs back in it and go from there. Put the plugs back in. I, uh, I use my old spark plug boot, stuff it on there. And tighten them up by hand. spark plugs in and tighten the spec so now I'm gonna go to each one of these plug wires and I'm gonna put a dab of dielectric grease in there and put them on I think I have an exhaust leak on huh number eight imagine that so one of the uh, reasons why I'm going ahead and put dielectric grease in it this time and I didn't last time well, it's because I'm going to rendezvous in the Ozarks in a few weeks. And when you get in Arkansas, there are a lot of creek crossings. And this little bit of grease will uh, definitely help from getting water in your uh, spark plug boots. We grab a 13mm uh, uh, socket and I will retorque those uh, manifold bolts real quick. So every one of the manifold bolts were loose. I guess I never went back and did the uh, second tightening of them. I don't know. Maybe it'll sound a little better now. That's a good thing. There we go. So the uh, valve seals, I got all that done. And, uh, you know, that solved my, uh, my smoking issue. 
I can let it run for 10 minutes now and rev it up and there is uh, no smoking. So that was, uh, that'll save me a little bit of embarrassment while at the rendezvous. So that project's done. And uh, next thing I gotta do before heading to the rendezvous is there is a uh, seal leaking on the passenger side of the disconnect for the uh, Dana 44 front axle underneath it. Um, that takes a special driver to uh, to put that in there and um, I figured out a way to make it work. I'll show that to you in the next video. So thanks for watching y'all. Have a good one. I appreciate it.